Welcome back, Ninja community and persons who have watched my quality statement and disclaimer video. If you haven't seen that already, you should probably go and check that out. Now, in this video, I'm going to be covering some ninja poetry, just the uh, just the uh, as a poem, as opposed to how it actually applies in like real combat situations. Okay, so in this video because I'll be covering some deadly ninja poetry. It may not look very flashy, but if you know the meanings of the words behind the ninja poetry, it can be quite, quite deadly. Okay, uh, okay, so, before I get into demonstrating some of the ninja poetry uh, with unarmed as well as demonstrating it with, like, various weapons, okay, I'm going to uh, go over my quality statement and disclaimer. Okay, which is mostly because of liability uh, and allowing the uh, allowing authorities to you know, enforce someone who might misuse the techniques that they could extrapolate from simply viewing my materials. So bear with me real quick as I go over my quality statement disclaimer. Okay, the viewer understands my quality statement and disclaimer video. Additionally, agrees to treat this video as is with ballistic protection. In short, that means I don't have a seal on it, therefore I don't guarantee the techniques under your application of the techniques. And if you're watching this video with the intention of using its content in committing a crime, that is additionally a crime. Actually using my content in committing a crime is an additional crime. Okay. Now I'm also going to talk a little bit about the history, uh, some of the history of why a lot of fighting arts would preserve their culture of their fighting arts into um, into a sort of dance to make it hidden right from the public eye or authority type uh, people who would try to outlaw such uh, fighting arts now just about every time that uh, governments have tried to outlaw uh, fighting arts is just about always been within a totalitarianism type of government. Every time they've tried to make it illegal for people to practice a fighting art openly, it has always been within that type of government. Like, uh, you have, well, I'm gonna cover, I'll, I'll just talk about some of the three uh, fighting arts out there, okay? Like in the, uh, like from Hawaii, their fighting art was so difficult to uh, to take down that they were forbidden from ever practicing their fighting art, at least openly. So they turned it into a dance to practice, you know, preserving their culture. And for a long time, the fighting techniques, some of them have become lost. But for a long time, it was mostly just a dance. Some of the applications isn't really understand. You're, it's very difficult for someone to understand why they would move a certain way. But if you take the same form against the same form, like someone using the Hawaiian style uh, fighting art against someone using the Hawaiian style fighting art, if they both have their weapon, which was the the torch, which they also practice fire breathing in their dances, if you add that application, then you have why they duck into certain positions because otherwise you would get you know fire in your face which would you know very well be uh, very well be very very devastating in a melee fight right so you, you know you have something like that okay uh, another one is uh, a fighting art from Africa and some people were brought over from Africa, their fighting art of their warriors has only been uh, recently uh, brought out into the public within the past decade or so. But the fighting art was preserved in a form of dance. And I don't know much about that art particularly. Okay. So... And then you have some of the Asian arts, some of the Asian style fighting arts, 
which in a lot of cases um, hiding the meaning was mostly so that the uh, mostly so that it could be practiced openly as a dance preserving the culture okay and the real applications the masters of the art would reveal what those movements were and even within Asian styles some of the techniques like of why they move in certain ways has been lost within the eons so imagine if you have fighting arts that was okay well you can only practice it you know as a as a kaida or dance with your weapon but we don't want to see y'all sparring each other right imagine if some of those techniques were lost that way imagine in the in the like other two examples i just gave you how much you know devastating techniques might have been lost within their form okay so as some of this ninja poetry that i'm giving you that that is that is ambiguous with various different weapons and also ambiguous um, unarmed it has applications and i'll I guess I'll talk about why. Why is, hypothetically, if a ninja were using smoke and they took a weapon without realizing what that weapon was, they would be able to fight with that weapon. Or if they, took, if they swapped weapons with someone in the midst of, of a fight with limited vision, they would still be able to use that person's weapon effectively. So, um... I'll, I'll give only a few examples within the, uh, within the techniques of my ninja poetry, okay? It doesn't look too flashy, so bear with me here. All right, so you have serpents hatched together. I don't know if you can see that. Let me back up a little bit more. Let's adjust the camera. Okay. So you have serpents hatched together, the rest atop the water, a prayer over ghosts, serpents come together, live on the turtle's back, the turtle pushes back, the tiger scratches the shell, the serpent swims in water. I've heard to tell again. Okay. Doing only some of the movements with, with a sigh as a as a uh, slightly modified without drastically modifying the movement. You have instructions here. That totally wrong. That's okay. We'll start over. All right. Now with a tonfa, you can see the tonfa here. This is a tonfa, or sometimes called a side hand of a ton. Okay. Could be done from this position.
and with a comma Okay, so that was some ninja poetry, and if you know the application, how it applies in a real combat situation, then you're not just reciting pretty words. And of course, like I've said before, the ninja poetry that I use is not very flashy or pretty, but can be very deadly. Okay. There are some things that uh, that Bruce Lee does that uh, makes me think that Bruce Lee was really trained by a real ninja. And one of those things is, is simply quoting Plato, who's quoting other people. So a lot of people attribute to attribute uh, Bruce Lee as the one who is coming up with some of the philosophies that he throws out there. However, a lot of times, since you know, a lot of times Bruce Lee, who studied philosophy in college, is quoting Plato. Okay, Plato, in one of his most famous quotes, which is, first know thyself, then know thy enemy, these are the keys to victory. Bruce Lee is quoting Plato who's quoting the Apollyon priests. Okay? Bruce Lee never actually misquoted some of Plato's more than five recorded quotes. Okay? Bruce Lee used one of Plato's quotes. And see, Plato was actually quoting the inscription upon the base of the Apollyon statue. And the Apollyon priests were masters of war of a war art involving archery. Plato was thousands of years closer to the event of the Trojan War, where one of the statues of Apollo was partially um, the inscription on the bottom was partially destroyed whoever went in there and killed everyone who knew what the inscription was destroyed part of the inscription leaving these are the keys to the victory completely intact so Plato who gives us at least five very different either misquotes or guesses okay Bruce Lee quotes one of them slightly different than Plato so he slightly misquotes Plato on one of his five very different misquotes or guesses of what the Apollo in statue actually said. And the other one that was that became missing in the Trojan War, one of them partially destroyed, the other one became missing, okay, was rediscovered within my lifetime. I think about over a decade ago. All right. So, well after Bruce Lee was dead and gone, so he never actually was alive when this was made public. When they rediscovered one of those missing, the missing statue that even Plato refers to of the two Apollyon statues, Bruce Lee guessed it closer than Plato. Plato was thousands of years closer to the event of the Trojan War. Thousands! And Bruce Lee got it closer than Plato. So some of the things that he says makes me think that he was a real ninja. Like a real ninja. Now Bruce Lee was never a Sifu in like Wing Chun while he was alive. He got his 
uh, he got his the Ip Man awarded him that title post mortem. Like after he was dead, he he recognized him as a Sifu and Wing Chun. Bruce Lee was never really a black belt. There's some things out there that don't do uh, some things, but there are some things that Bruce Lee says and some of his philosophies that makes me think he was a real ninja, or at least trained by a real ninja, okay? <sighs> so if you, uh, if you uh, liked my video, feel free to hit like hard like a ninja, and uh, Feel free to check me out on my Facebook under my artist name, Mel L, that's M-E-L-E-O. -E and subscribe to my YouTube channel to be alerted for when I do random videos on YouTube. Try to do them a little more often. Okay. And, uh, let's see. Feel free to comment on this video. And, uh, let's see. What else are you supposed to do on this YouTube thing? Okay. Hmm. So, hit like, subscribe. Um, I'm a better ninja than I am a business person. <clears throat> Okay. Well, I guess share my video with people who are ninja, but not with people who ought to be ninja, because they might accidentally learn something. So, until next time, stay ninja, my friends. Stay ninja.